Morning, my name is Chris from Moto Legends. I'm here with my colleague Billy, a young locking bar. Billy, say hello. Hello, my name's Billy. We're here today to talk about retro helmets. Now, motorcycling fashions change, and over the last 20 years or so, we've gradually fallen out of love with the sports bike. In the early millennium, Charlie and Ewan convinced us that what we really needed was a great big adventure bike with big knobbly tires and metal panniers on the side. More recently, we've become besotted by the kind of bikes that we remember as we were kids. But a genuine classic is too much of a commitment for most of us. And so out of that has grown an industry around retro bikes. The kind of bikes we're talking about are bikes like the ever popular Kawasaki Z900 RS, the BMW R9T, the Guzzi V7, the Ducati Scrambler, and the Triumph Bonneville. But with these new bikes, a new aesthetic has emerged. Out have gone one-piece leathers, knee sliders, gloves with knuckle protectors, to be replaced by single layer jeans, wax cotton jackets, short boots, leather jackets. But what is missing so far is the helmet that matches this gear perfectly. What we have are helmets like this. Now, this is a great helmet. It's a Shui GT Air 2, but it just doesn't look right on the kind of bikes we're talking about. There are, in fact, lots of great retro helmets out there. Mike, is he taller than me? I'm not having that. I'm not having that. I'm not having that. Better? OK. There are lots of great retro helmets out there. The issue is that some of them don't perform particularly well as helmets. So this morning, what I thought we'd do, we're going to go through a number of the more popular helmets and just talk through the pros and cons, ones that work, ones that don't work so well. First one I want to talk about, this is branded Blauer, Bauer, is it Blauer or Bauer? Blauer. Blauer. It's branded Blauer, but it's in fact a premier helmet. Now, we in some ways are responsible for this helmet. We took it to the maker, Premier, about five or six years ago and said, could you make a retro helmet? And they said, yes, of course we could. We were actually amazingly surprised that less than three months later, they came back with this helmet. What we hadn't realized at the time was that, in essence, this was just their 1980s helmet reconfigured. No changes at all. So this is, in effect, the helmet that Phil Reed raced in. But they haven't made any concessions to modernity. So whilst it looks the part, it has a lovely, smooth, round shell, fits OK, uh, comes in a couple of shell sizes, you've got this situation here where the front is flat, as it was back in the 80s. Leaves a great big gap under the visor. So you don't really need ventilation in this helmet. It doesn't have any, but you don't need any because it can come up the visor there. Similarly, if it rains, it's going to come in here. So it's a great looking helmet. Um, fine if you're going up for a bacon sandwich, if you're traveling at 40, 50 miles an hour and you want to look like the coolest guy in the car park. But as a motorcycling helmet, no, it's not really up to much. Bell Bullock. Gorgeous looking helmet, very much the darling of the hipster crowd. It's got this sort of astronaut helmet look. Um, it was developed by a design student and bought off Bell about five years ago. In fact, I think we launched this um, for the first time in the UK. It must have been at the Bike Shed show in 2014. It went down incredibly well, and really since then, it's been the helmet to own. Definitely. And the fit has been greatly improved in recent years, previous generations. Uh, it's got much more of an oval-shaped EPS inside, and the cheap pads can be replaced to improve the fit, which I've personally done on my helmet. It's made a huge difference. I mean, I think, think one of the issues with this helmet in the initial years was we reckon here in the shop only about 50% of people could make themselves comfortable in the bell bullet. But I've noticed more recently when people come in and say, can they try it on, it fits much, much better. So they've done, they've done great, great things to make it more usable. Yeah, and that including all the amazing graphics that Bell always come out top on, there are unfortunately some downsides. The visor doesn't seal properly to the shell, which means it can be noisy, wet and very windy. Um, there are venting on the helmet, on above the visor and just on the chin bar there, however they're pretty superficial where the slider on the back doesn't actually do an awful lot. Some issues with this helmet, but overall it's still a fantastic bit of kit. Um, it's beautifully made, uh, comes in carbon or a fiberglass version. The carbon versions are incredibly light. The graphics are lovely, and nobody does, does graphics like, like Bell. It's beautifully appointed. Uh, things like this, the, the, the magnetic visor catch here, 
very innovative, very different. Whilst the venting might not work particularly well, aesthetically it's beautiful. So when you buy a Bell Bullet, I think you know you're buying something that is not super high tech, but it's still a beautiful helmet. Billy, can you pass me the new Bell helmet, the Eliminator? I first saw this helmet two years ago at ECMA. Um, it's a motorcycle helmet, obviously, but it's based on a car helmet. When I first saw it, I was quite critical of these holes in the roof. Um, I put it to them that it was a great idea if you lived in California and it was sunny and it was hot and you needed ventilation, but it wasn't so, so good in the UK. They pointed out that it had been used in NASCAR for years and no one had ever had, had a problem. I pointed out that NASCAR cars have roofs and it wouldn't necessarily be a problem in a, in a NASCAR car. Eventually what Bill did, they came up with this. It's a bung. So in the winter, when it's raining, you would put the bung in, that seals this, but you're going to lose the ventilation. In the summer, you wouldn't use this. And it's going to be a very well-vented helmet. Downside to that, it's also going to be a pretty noisy helmet. But the big thing, I think, with the Eliminator over the bell is it's a lovely fit. We can change, change the cheek pads. Um, it's a lightweight hem helmet. Again, a nice graphics. It feels very solidly put, uh, put together. Um, the, the visor has a real kind of firm uh, clo uh, closure to it. Um, it comes with a, that's a, that's a permanent a pin lock visor of sorts, is it Billy? So we've essentially double glazed the visor itself, calling it a Pro Vision. So you don't have to replace a pin lock. It's already pre-installed and permanent inside the actual lens itself. Um, nice seal, a rubber seal on, on the visor. So again, not the perfect hemp helmet, not the quietest, um, but a nice helmet and it fits well. So next we'll talk about the Gringo S from Biltwell. Just that one there please, Chris. Oh. It's not a light helmet, it's actually pretty heavy. Now, albeit it is a gorgeous looking lid, it's very round, very minimalist. Uh, it's got quite a narrow viewing aperture from the uh, inside, but the lining is particularly comfortable. It has an antibacterial and removable and washable lining. Um, the visor itself doesn't seal particularly well to the actual shell. That will make it very wet and very windy. Now, we've also heard on reports that they can drop down whilst riding, um, which doesn't make it a particularly secure option, although it does button down on a press stud. I mean, I've, I've got to say, say, Billy, I, I think it's a nice looking lid. It's a great price. Um, at present, this sells for about £160. Um, my problem is, I think it just feels like a cheap, a cheap lid. It feels as though it's not been put, uh, put together. Um, this is just about the flimsiest visor I've ever come across. That's not a detente worth talk uh, talking about. The seal is, is terrible. You know, the fit here, um, you know, th this is barely a full, full face helmet. So um, if you can only afford a helmet at this, 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 this price, so be it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's a great bit of kit. No. So the next helmet we want to look at is the Nex XG100R. Thanks, Billy. So a nice, pleasing round shell aesthetically. This is what we're looking for in a retro helmet. Um, so no clutter here, no aerofoils, no spoilers. This one's got qu quite a deep front um, chin piece. I'm not particularly enamored of, of that, but it's just the way it is. Um, nice visor. Um, it feels, it, it feels uh, very thick. It feels like a quality visor. Um, it has a really nice uh, detente. Also takes a pin lock insert. Not a real pin lock, but their own, their own pin lock. So you will get a degree of uh, anti-fogging with this. Seal is okay, it could, could be better. We're not talking about modern high-tech standards here, but it's not, not bad for a retro helmet. In terms of the venting itself, pretty minimalist. There's a, um, a button inside that moves up and down here that opens the venting there. But it's not really a very well-vented helmet. And in fact, that's a criticism of most retro helmets. Um, other than the natural venting from, from poor-fitting visors, they don't have a lot of extra venting. Inside, a perfectly nice, a lovely, suede interior. Um, can't really change the cheek pads to, to change the size. It's a round fit. If it fits you, it's a fine helmet. Um, but if you've got a narrow, long oval head or intermediate oval head, this helmet isn't going to work on you. This is the Hedden Heroin Racer. Absolutely gorgeous looking helmet. Really classic, really minimalist. Finished off with leather trim. Now, as nice as leather trim does look, it doesn't do much to seal the visor to the actual shell. In fact, I can still see down the visor. The visor itself has two positions, open and closed, and it doesn't have a great feel to it either. It does come fitted with a pin lock, 
pin lock equivalent, so you're not going to have too much of an issue with misting up. The venting there, we can't see really where it goes, and we don't think it will do an awful lot. Now, on the inside, it's a pretty comfortable fit. It has an antibacterial lining, however, it is not removable or washable. So the fit is what it is. It has got two shell sizes, and it's a very light helmet because it is a carbon fiber and fiberglass shell. I have to say, Billy, I love, I love the look of the head, head and I think it's beautiful. Um, but the price is frightening. Um, this helmet is 650 pounds as we record this. Um, now for that price, you can buy the most sophisticated helmet on the market, which is probably the Shui and Neotech 2 um, with sound deadening, 120 pin lock, changeable cheek pads, drop down sun, sun visor. Um, and whilst this is lovely, I think you're paying for the prestige of the name. In my book, it's not a helmet that's worth £650. Uh, it's a lovely he he helmet. I suppose it's in the eye of the beholder. Um, but for me, that's a lot of money for what is still a fairly basic lid. Next helmet I want to talk about is the AGV X3000. Now, we were massively excited when we heard that AGV were going to produce a retro helmet. This, after all, is one of the big players in the game. If they were going to make a helmet, we knew it would be top quality. In essence, what they did was recreate the helmet that riders like Agostini and Barry Sheen had worn back in the 70s and 80s. And it is a lovely looking fit of kit. In some ways, I suppose my view is that they've copied it a little bit too slavishly. I think the idea is to have a retro look looking helmet, but with modern technical features. But things they've done with this in order to be authentic mean that it doesn't work quite as well as a road helmet. For me, this cutaway here, which was actually designed so that Agostini could lean on the tank of his bike and get, and get lower on the bike to enable him to go faster down, down the street. This means that often, when you're wearing this helmet, your, chi your chin sticks down underneath. Um, what they haven't done, which I suppose is good, they've not put a hole in here, which is what Agostini had in his, so that he could have a cigarette on the, uh, on the grid before he actually raced. But in terms of some of the other detail, it's lovely. Um, here, for, for example, at the way the visor at attaches, it looks as though that's a genuine circlip. In fact, it's just a piece of, of design. If you pull this, this rubber pad off, you've actually got an Allen key style, style arrangement in, in there that enables you to take the visor on and off. Um, visor itself, fine. Um, but as with most of these helmets, you know, I can still see down, down there. But the way these are done with the attachments on the side like, like this, you're never going to get a perfect feel. So again, this is going to be a relatively noisy helmet um, and in extremis on a, on a wet day you're going to expect to get some some rain in um, doesn't come with um, a pin a pin lock visor or any an anti um, fogging mechanism it does have some venting in truth it's a little bit Heath Robinson this is the venting so you take that off it vents um, when you don't want it to vent you try to find that you've lost it um, and they're difficult to replace so it's a lovely looking, looking lid. Fit um, doesn't suit everyone. It's quite, I think, a, um, a short lid front, front to back. We have a number of customers who find that their chin comes right, right up against, against the chin bar. But as with all of these helmets, it's a case of if it fits you, it's great. If it doesn't, there's not a lot we can do about it. Technically, we can change the cheek, cheek pads. Um, there are two or three, three sizes, so we can do a certain amount to improve the fit in, in the cheeks. Um, so nice, uh, nice lids, some great, uh, great graphics. This is a Barry Sheen one. There's an Agostini one and a number of plain, uh, plain colors. Um, so yes, a credible effort. So as we've seen, there's some great retro helmets out, out there, some lovely looking lids, all of them compromised in one way or another, which is why we're particularly excited that the next player into the market is going to be Arai with what they call their Rapid Neo. Um, as we're recording this at the end of October, it's not available, but we're told that it should arrive with us at some point in November. Um, so the fact that Arai have got involved in the market, everyone has confidence in Arai, they're going to make a fantastic lid, the quality is going to be without compare, it's going to be a safe lid, it's going to be well built, it's, it's going to last. So this is the helmet in some ways that we have been waiting for. Um, a couple of point, uh, points of detail, um, as you'd expect, nice seal. So this isn't a helmet that I think you're going to have lots of ingress of or, or unwanted ingress of, of air and rain. On that subject, the venting, um, still not the best. This is still not of the very highest modern standards. Um, 
So you have a chin vent here, there's an adjuster beadlet behind it, but in some ways that's not much better than the Bell Bullet or say the next XG100. Um, you have eyebrow vents here, they work very well, but what we've found when we've been testing this helmet is when they're open, it does make the helmet a wee bit noisy. Um, visor mechanism, um, Arai have always said that they would never move from, from their um, uh, visor covers. But we don't like that system. That creates a lot of noise as wind, wind goes un underneath it. Um, it's also pretty precarious. Um, a lot of people have broken visors and helmets over the years just trying to get those visors out. This has a slightly cruder um, arrangement where you're going to need a, a screwdriver to undo the visor. But actually, I think it suits the helmet and it's probably a little bit more reliable. Also have a nice um, click arrangement here or, or crack crack arrangement. You push that open, it opens the visor, you can then r ride with it in that, in that position. Aesthetically, lovely, nice round, round shell. Not sure that if we had designed this helmet, we would have gone for this slightly Simpson banditish um, fr front nose. But I think our eyes aim was to make this a helmet that you could wear on a classic bike, a retro bike, but also a custom bike. So they wanted to give it um, an extra little bit of flair with this um, sli sli slightly more aggressive nose piece. Um, I think an important note to mention is the fact that we can do custom fits when we have this helmet in stock. So we'll be able to take out all the linings and get the perfect fit for you and this helmet. What, what kind of fit do you think, think it is naturally, Billy? I think it's an intermediate oval uh, going towards an oval. So actually for the European market, it's an incredibly comfortable lid as it is. I had to find, I found that, that changing the cheap pads were actually far more comfortable, but that's just something that we're going to be able to do in stock. So as we've seen today, there are lots of great retro helmets on the market. Some of them look amazing. Many of them are compromised in one way or another, but in some ways, that's the nature of a retro helmet. These are not designed for high speed motorway riding. And if all you're doing is going up to Newlands Corner on a Sunday morning for a bacon sandwich, any of the helmets we've discussed here this morning would be fantastic. In truth, we're pinning our hopes on the Arai. We think it's a fantastic lid. It's the first time that a truly modern, sophisticated maker has made a retro helmet. So I think this is going to be a league above most retro helmets out there. It's not inexpensive. Um, as we go to press, as it were, this is being billed as a 450 pound helmet. So uh, a mid price helmet, not as expensive as the Hedden, but more expensive than some of the other retro lids. If you want to know if it's right for you, I think you really need to go into a dealer and have someone fit it for you. And it's the beauty of this helmet. We can take the cheap pads out, the headliner, we can custom fit it to you. So if you're interested, come and see us and we'll, we'll do that. Um, anyway, thank you very much indeed for, for listening. If you want more details, you can go and read our more detailed review of this helmet on motolegends.com. But for now, thank you. This has been Chris. Thanks, Billy. Thanks a lot. Bye.